Today, would the Messiah say that we in our nation are a wicked and adulterous generation? Welcome to Revealing the Truth. I'm John Fisher and with me is David Brett. I asked the question in the beginning, would the Messiah, would, would Yahshua consider us in this nation to be a wicked and adulterous generation? And that's a real tough question. Uh, typically we, we don't want to think of ourselves as being wicked or adulterous, mm -hmm. but we have to understand uh, in the context of Scripture what, what Yahshua is saying when in um, in Mark uh, chapter 3, verse 38, he said, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So he's, he's uh, referring to the time when he returns to us. And... In a t what does it mean to be ashamed of the Messiah? Well, and of his words. I, I mean, that yeah. <laughs> allows me to think about uh, the whole Bible because there's always been a mediator between man and the Father, and that has been Yahshua. Mm -hmm. He pre-existed. We actually have a, a booklet on that, Did the Savior Pre-Exist? Very in-depth because um, there are a number of scriptures that we find from Genesis on that talk about this interaction and an, an angel of Yahweh is how he was referred to at times but it was essentially mm -hmm. the Savior the pre-existent Savior so the words his words which he always defaulted the Father mm -hmm. are the words we find in Scripture right and uh, this angel of Yahweh uh, was who Moses spoke to in the burning bush mm -hmm. and uh, Yahshua himself said that no one has seen the Father um, and oh. so who was speaking to Moses at t the top of Mount Sinai when, when the law was formally given? I mean, the law has always existed, mm -hmm. uh, even from the very beginning. But who was it who spoke to Moses? Well, it had to be Yahshua. Um, and who spoke to the prophets? Who, sp who speaks to us today? Mm -hmm. It's Yahshua who, who's speaking that. So when he says, if you love me, obey my commandments, He's speaking of all of the commandments that are written in, in Scripture, the Ten Commandments for just a brief summary of all of the commandments, but all of the feast days um, and all of, those, all of the things in Scripture that pertain to us as the family of Israel. Because we are, we are the family of Israel. A lot of people don't understand that either, mm -hmm. that uh, when the house of Israel, which, which is ten tribes, the northern tribes, were uh, assaulted by Assyria and scattered to the world, Yahweh is saying that he is going to bring them back into the fold along with uh, the house of Judah. Mm -hmm. um, and so when people ask us, you know, what denomination are you? <laughs> I mean, all we can say is we're of Israel or we're the same faith as the Messiah. Yeah. Well, being grafted in, I mean, uh, the Apostle Paul talks about this in Revelation 11. You really have to examine it closely, but if you compare... Uh, you mean Romans with, 11? Or, I'm sorry, Romans 11. Yeah. And going back to Jeremiah 11, it talks about the Ephraim and the northern tribes and also Judah mm -hmm. as being that, that olive tree. And that's exactly who Paul is describing being grafted into. Wild olive branches being grafted back into that, that olive tree. And through the Messiah now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not our own doing. It's, it's Yahweh's doing through the Messiah. But right. it's a process. And <clears throat> Israel was dispersed throughout the nation, so we're not claiming to be, you know, uh, blood Israelites necessarily. But the reality is uh, we are accepted into the household of Israel through the Messiah, and we are expected to abide by the house rules. Yeah. It's yeah. referred to as the spirit of adoption. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is adopting people into his family. And it doesn't matter whether you're of the bloodline of any of the tribes or not. 
And that's the way it's always been. The law has always been that anyone, any Gentile, anyone who is not born in the, in the, in the heritage of, um, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can come into the fold because um, there's only one law. law, one law for the homeborn and one law for the same law for, for the, the strangers, mm -hmm. who's anyone. Yeah. And so, so it doesn't matter if you are the particular bloodline. If you want to worship the Father, uh, Almighty Yahweh, according to His will, then you are of the family of Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's something that we need to clarify because in, in, the, in the churches today, it's taught that Israel is lost. And they will point to the house of Israel, but the phrase house of Israel only refers to 10 of the 12 tribes, typically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it does refer to the whole house of Israel. But Paul uh, knew this, and he spoke of it as a mystery in Romans uh, 11 in speaking of the uh, fullness of the Gentiles. He said that Israel has been blinded in part um, until the fullness of the Gentiles comes into uh, the fold, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that and the phrase fullness of the Gentiles in Hebrew is malo ha goim. Malo meaning fullness and goim referring to the Gentiles or the, the nations. There's only one other place in Scripture where the phrase malo hakoim is used, and that's in chapter 48 of Genesis, in which Jacob is blessing and adopting the two sons of Joseph into, the, into Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the story. He crosses his hands over, puts his left hand on the oldest child, Manasseh, and his right hand on Ephraim. Joseph tries to <laughs> change that, but, <laughs> but Jacob blesses Ephraim who later becomes the namesake of the ten tribes, the house of Ephraim, the, mm -hmm. house, the house of Joseph, or the house of Israel. All are the same people. And um, so Paul, when he talks about the fullness of the Gentiles, he's speaking of Ephraim, he's speaking of the ten tribes that he is going to uh, adopt back into the household of, of uh, Israel if they're willing to abide in his law, mm -hmm. in Yahweh's law. Yeah. That's the condition as well as for, uh, for, for Judah. And, and they say that they have the law and they, do, they have preserved the law very accurately. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the translations have been uh, skewed. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the best word for it. <laughs> but uh, today, uh, Jude, uh, the house of Judah has their own traditions that are uh, changes in the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yahshua chastised the Pharisees for making up their own laws which covered up and obscured the law of Yahweh. That's why he called them a brood of vipers and you know, you worship in the, ha in the, in the synagogue of Satan. I mean, yeah. these are harsh things about a really important matter that they have gone away from the law of Yahweh. And that's why John the baptizer says, repent. Repent from what? Repent from disobedience mm -hmm. and go back to Yahweh. That's what repent means, return to Yahweh. Yeah, he describes, you know, do the works that show repentance. So mm -hmm. in, in other words, we can say, well, I'm sorry, and not actually change our ways, and that's wrong. Mm -hmm. But to change our ways to any ways is also wrong. To change our ways back to Yahweh's way, that's correct. And that's essentially the whole message is <laughs> to come back, repent, and, and start doing what the Father wants. Right. And, the, and the son proclaimed the father's word. He says in Matthew 4.4, 4, Luke 4.4, 4, he's, he's referring to Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, I think. He says, live, we are to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. He's, he's quoting the father's name because he's not hiding it like the Pharisees did with their ineffability doctrine, the, the idea that it's too holy to pronounce. It, it's ridiculous because we are to uh, lift up Yahweh's name and uh, honor him. And we're not to remove anything from Scripture, nor are we to add to it. Yeah, I think there's a warning in Scripture actually about doing that, right. both in the Old and New Testament. Right, mm -hmm. right. So um, not using his name is taking something out and using the Lord in all caps or, or God in all caps mm -hmm. um, is basically an abomination. The fantasy at least, yeah. And uh, we're not to do that. And so, I mean, that's the primary reason I would say that we use the name of Yahweh, that, that's his name. And mm -hmm. we use the name of Yahshua, that's his name. But that's a Jewish name. 
or it's a Hebrew name. Well, you know, our names are transliterated. Right. I mean, right. I was listening to a foreign station here not too long ago, and I heard the president's name. It, it, brought, it was brought through clear uh, because it's transliterated. They would honor him by using his name. And right. we are to honor our father. I mean, who, who deserves our honor but him, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately. Right. And, and the original scripture that I quoted in Mark 8, uh, where Yash was speaking of an adulterous and sinful uh, generation, we, we know what sin is. Sin, as, as, uh, uh, as told to us in 1 John 3, uh, verses 4 through 9, I'll just read those. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. So sin is lawlessness, and that's what it says. And sin is lawlessness. Verse 5, um, And ye know that he, Yahshua, was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. In other words, he did not sin. He kept his Father's law. Mm -hmm. Whoever abides in him, in Yahshua, does not sin. So if we say that we are in the Messiah, or the Messiah is in us, we are not to sin. We are not to transgress the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And that, that spirit that we're given through the laying on of hands, mm -hmm. uh, through immersion in the Son's name, that spirit helps us to be obedient. That's what we're given the spirit for, mm -hmm. is so that we can obey. That's what the prophecy says. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. So if we're violating the law of Yahweh, we, the scripture says we don't know the Messiah. Okay? Little children, verse 7, let no one deceive you. And he's not speaking to little kids. He's speaking to, <laughs> you know, isn't it interesting how it's, you know, the children of Yahweh. We mm -hmm. don't hear the teenagers of Yahweh or the adults of Yahweh. It's, we're all children yeah. because we're all learning. And children can be obedient or disobedient. Right. And either of the father or of the devil, right. essentially. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteousness, just as he, Yahweh, Yahshua, is righteous. He who sins, who, he who transgresses the law of Yahweh, is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of Yahweh was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of Yahweh does not sin. For his seed, not this the seed is a really important concept. Uh, what seed are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the seed of the tree of life, not the seed um, in the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, it's the seed that Yahshua is bringing to us. Mm -hmm. He says that um, <clears throat> for this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of Yahweh does not sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of Yahweh. And we, we hear the phrase, you know, born again, um, which really means being born from above. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that, that anyone walking the earth right now has the seed in them in, as fully as Yahshua had the seed in him. Yeah, we still really are in the flesh. We still, mm -hmm. we still are um, tempted by our own will, our own uh, desire to, to do it our way, and it's called pride. And when we return, we'll speak in, in more detail and in greater depth about this. Did you know that the Heavenly Father's name has been purposely covered up in the Bible almost 7,000 times? It was done in an effort to protect people from blaspheming the sacred name. But because of this doctrine, people have broken the third commandment. It's time to come out of man-made errors and into the true worship of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. To learn more, request your free in-depth study entitled The Mistaken J. Write to YAIY 2963 County Road 233 Kingdom City, Missouri 
65262 or visit us online at yaiy.org. You may also call toll free 1877 642 4101. Who could deny scripture and that sin is the transgression of the law of Yahweh? But what is adultery when Yahshua says, uh, speaks of an adulterous and wicked or sinful generation? Well, I think we, we always see a, a physical and a, um, a spiritual application, mm -hmm. not always, but uh, I think for the most part we do in, in many things that we find in mm -hmm. scripture. Yeah, well, James defines uh, adultery uh, in uh, the fourth chapter of James, uh, verses four through 10. Let me read through this and get a clear idea of what adultery is. He says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with Yahweh? In other words, against Yahweh. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Yahweh. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. He gives more grace. Therefore, he says, Yahweh resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to Yahweh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to Yahweh, and he will draw near to you. He's speaking of repentance, drawing near to Yahweh. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And that word double-minded in the Greek also means double-spirited. Mm. So we have the spirit of the world and the spirit of, of Yahweh uh, inside of us, or can. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yahweh, and he will lift you up. There's a promise uh, that if we acknowledge our sinfulness, our transgressions against the law of Yahweh, that he will lift us up. It's in the spirit of humility. And humility, humiliation are similar terms. Uh, we use them diff you know, differently. But if we truly want to understand what humility is, we have to see ourselves as um, humiliated in the sight of what Yahweh wants us to be and what he wants us to do, we, we should have a sense of humiliation. Uh, our laughter is not appropriate if, we're, if we understand who we are and uh, our, the nature of our flesh. Um, in Jeremiah chapter 3, uh, verses 6 through 15, we read, Yahweh said also to me, this is Jeremiah speaking, in the days of Josiah the king, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree, and there played the harlot. Now, when he says Israel here, he's speaking of the house of Israel. He's speaking of the ten tribes. Verse 7, <clears throat> And I said, after she has done all these things, return to me. But she did not return. And her treacherous sister, Judah, the house of Judah, saw it. Then I saw that for all the causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, in other words, playing the harlot, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce. Yahweh gave a certificate of divorce to the house of Israel, the ten tribes. Why? Well, because they went to idolatry. Uh, the king of, of the house of Israel didn't want his people to go down to Jerusalem and honor the feast of Yahweh in the, in the land of the house of Judah. So he made up new feasts at a different time, made two golden calves, put one in the, in the city of Dan, the other in the city of uh, uh, Bethel, and said to the people, here is Yahweh who brought you out of uh, Egypt. And of course, Yahweh, <laughs> that was an abomination to Yahweh. And he took away the hedge of protection allowed Assyria to come in and scatter them uh, to, the, to the world. Mm. Um, so it came to pass through her casual, and this, now he's talking about Judah, I had put her away and given her a certificate of divorce, speaking of the house of Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah did not fear, but went and played the harlot also. 
So it came to pass through her casual harlotry that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and trees. Hmm. Stones and trees, adultery? What does that mean? And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah has not turned to me with her whole heart, but in pretense, says Yahweh. Mm. Okay, so what does pretense mean? It, it, pretending. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the same term, uh, basically, as what Yahshua called the Pharisees. He called them um, actors, basically. <laughs> Oh, right, hypocrites. Hypocrites. Okay, that's the Greek word for actors, is a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David, for that. I, <laughs> hypocrite is someone who pretends to be someone who they're not. So he was acknowledging that the Pharisees were pretending to be righteous, but they were abiding in their own laws, not in the laws of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. um, and continuing on uh, in Jeremiah 3, uh, Verse 11, then Yahweh said to me, backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. So he's, he's seeing Israel now um, uh, kind of mending their ways. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, return or repent. Backsliding Israel, says Yahweh. I will not cause my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says Yahweh. I will not remain angry forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity, that you're transgressing my laws, uh, that you have transgressed against Yahweh, your Elohim, and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says Yahweh. Verse 14, return, O backsliding children, says Yahweh, for I am married to you. I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds, teachers, elders, um, pastors. I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So what is adultery? Adultery is looking at the nation's ways of honoring their deities. This is what the house of Israel did and the house of Judah. Um, the house of Judah, I believe they ended up sacrificing their children to Molech. Uh, live children thrown into the fire. I mean, this is an abomination. They were following the ways of another nation. That is adultery. Israel is the bride, essentially, of Yahweh. And it does say that he divorced um, the house of Israel, but he's calling her back, and he wants to remarry her. Now, there's... We could get into a lot of... Dispensationalism. Um, you will... <laughs> Yahweh says, if a man marries a woman and divorces her and she marries someone else, then he cannot remarry her. So under his law, he cannot le legally marry the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, so what is he going to do? What did he do? He sent his son as his representative. And we, the house of Israel, who have been scattered to the nations and, I believe, have picked up the religion of Christianity... Right which is prohibited by Yahweh. I mean, to right. pick up the, the ways of the nations and, uh, right. and worship Him that way. Right. Deuteronomy 12, verses 30, 31, 32. Right. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't want to be reminded of the nation's ways. Right. And Christianity has basically said the law of Yahweh is dead. We are no longer under it. It's been nailed to the cross. Mm -hmm. But has it? it? How can it be? How can it be done away with? Mm -hmm. it, it cannot be. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that actually gets back to a Pharisaical rule because they had a wall of partition set up in the mm -hmm. temple, mm -hmm. and Yahshua himself said, you're not going to worship here nor at this mountain. Uh, there, I mean, that time is coming, and that's the time that we're in now. But uh, Yahweh is uh, allowing his son to bring us back together. Right. So the separation, that wall of partition, is breaking down. Right. Yeah. Who did the Messiah send his 12 disciples to? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's in Matthew 10. In Matthew 15, um, he says he has only come for the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who did Peter write to? He wrote, he wrote to the pilgrims of the dispersion. What dispersion is he talking about? The one that happened 700 years before the Messiah, in which the house of Israel was scattered to the nations. Who did, um, who did James write to? If you look up in the first few verses, uh, James wrote to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. 
And John, in the book of Revelation, who did he write to? Well, he wrote to the seven assemblies. Where are those assemblies located? In the same place that Peter wrote to, and he names the places and also in the book of Revelation. These are the people who are of the house of Israel who were captured by Assyria, and uh, they have remembered the ways of Yahweh uh, over uh, 700 years. Mm -hmm. there, are, there is a remnant of those who uh, remember the ways of Yahweh. And who did Paul go to? <laughs> he went to the same people that Peter and James and John uh, were writing to. John, according to the Messiah, told him to, to write to these assemblies. Mm -hmm because he knew that these are, these are the people who remember, um, which interestingly, the word remember in Hebrew does not mean just call to mind. It means to speak and act in behalf of. So when the scripture says, remember the Sabbath day, it's in, in the Hebrew context, it's saying speak and act in behalf of Sabbath, not just recall. Oh yeah, seventh day, that's the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That's not what it means. It means do it, mm -hmm. it means obey. To honor it. I think a lot of people today, you know, have been kind of turned off from a lot of religion, so why should they believe us? And they, and they may ask, well, show us some sort of sign or give us some evidence that you're really, that you really have the Spirit. Well, ultimately that, that is in the, the pudding, so to speak. If we're not teaching to the law and to the testimony, then there is no truth in us. But if we are, then um, people should listen. Mm -hmm. But it gets back to that idea of what, uh, you know, the wicked and adulterous nation, our, our people's generation, what are they looking for? They're looking for signs and wonders and mm -hmm. these things that are, you know, fluff. They're not really the core of what we should be doing. Uh, Psalm 119, 115 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And this is what we really need to pay attention to. Yeah, and, and that verse captures the literal and the figurative. A lamp unto my feet tells me how I'm supposed to walk in this life. But a light unto my path. The path is, uh, in Hebrew, the sense of path is, is circular. When we read in Psalm 23, um, he will, that he will lead us in the paths of righteousness. Those are the cycles of righteousness. Uh, there's a Sabbath day every seven days. There's the, the, day, the memorial day of Passover, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the day of Pentecost, the day of Trumpets, the day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles, and the last great day. These are the cycles mm -hmm. that Yahshua it will lead us into. And these are the holy days. These are not holidays. These are not man-made. These are the Father's, right. which he says are his. And all of the feast days of Yahweh are, are not the feasts of the Jews. I mean, the Jews do honor them in a sense, but they're not, they don't belong to them. The feast days are all about the Messiah and they belong to Yahweh. And we pray that you will seek this out, this information, uh, and return to Yahweh.